This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week 17 may not feature the flashiest teams. It's no big Chiefs game outside of Bills Bengals. There's no big Chiefs game. There's no big Eagles game, stuff like that. But Patriots, Dolphins, pretty big game for playoffs. Bucks, Panthers, pretty big game for playoffs. Jets, Jets, Seahawks, kind of big for playoffs too. So we've got some intriguing games, despite the fact they're not like household type teams. We're going to break down some of the bigger games this week and also talk some Bills Bengals at the end to give Tom a little reprieve. Tom Vecchia swinging by to break down these games and his thoughts on them to get you some good bets over our FanDuel Sportsbook for Week 17. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here as many by Tom Avecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. You can find his work over at numberfire.com. Tom, happy holidays to you. Happy week 17. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy week 17. It's certainly uh, an interesting week. I, yeah. I, I think you'd say it's the best way to put it. Between this week and next week, what we're going to be seeing from the teams, uh, there's a lot to get to. It's like it's kind of like a, a beauty is in the eye of the beholder kind of thing because there was a tweet last week that was like okay on Sunday there are there's only one game featuring two teams above 500 which is I think accurate still I believe that's accurate but like I don't know there are a lot of other important games uh, that are still to be played um, so even though they might not be like the most high profile there are still some pretty fun ones like you know. Dolphins Patriots is kind of a clunker. I'm not going to lie, but it's still an important game for the playoffs. Uh, I could have put Packers Vikings in there too. I forgot to, uh, you know, talk about that one as well, but still some decent games. So as long as you're okay, diving the dumpster a bit, it's a fun slate. And honestly, Tom, we're not above that, right? No, absolutely not. I mean, I, I think that like you can find a, a ray of motivation for any, any game, any matchup, like 49ers Raiders, at face value doesn't seem great, especially after Carr got benched yesterday. But yeah. the 49ers can still claim the second seed, if I believe, in the in the NFC. So it's like, all right. I, I, yeah. yeah, I'm not like thrilled to be like seeing those highlights or like watch that, but like the 49ers still need to play and win. Yeah. So there you can find like a, a part of each game that is at least interesting. You definitely can. And we're gonna break down some of the some of these and get the Tom Three on the bigger ones to break down week 17 in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering this spread wherever you get your podcast. Our college football semifinal preview went up yesterday with Dr. Ed Feng getting his read on Ohio State versus Georgia and Michigan versus TCU. His read on those, his favorite bets, some player props for those games, and more. Find that by searching for covering the spread wherever you get your podcast, and you can also go to the FanDuel YouTube page to find that there. Looking to get more out of this NFL season? Well, now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to touchdown scores or over under yardage. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in free bets when you join FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770 stop in maryland md gambling help.org in new york 1-877-8 hope and or text hope and why or in west virginia go to 1-800-gambler.net now you mentioned motivation tom and that's going to be a key thing not just this week but also next week because there are some teams with an eye towards the future and that future could be the playoffs or it could be week 18 uh, for teams like the titans and the jags so i want to know what your process is in determining 
how to handle those teams. Because like the Jags have said they're going to play their guys. I think the betting markets reflect some uncertainty there because I've got the Jags here by like eight in that game and it's four, four and a half. So a little bit, uh, a little bit unnerving to, to see that for sure. So what steps do you go through determining what level of trust to have in these teams? I, I mean, the, the first, the easy answer would just be to read and, you know, read whatever information is available because ultimately that's, that's all we have. It's, mm-hmm. it's not like we know like the, the true path these teams are going to take or like the, the true lineups and inactives and actives that we're going to be seeing from each of these teams. But at, at first it's just, just to read. It's like, okay, what teams are in a spot this week? What are their actual playoff scenarios? What are their actual playoff clinching scenarios? Once I get a, a good idea on that, which is, you know, relatively clear at this point. It's like, okay, the Titans don't actually need to win tonight versus the Cowboys. That Thus, they listed Derrick Henry as doubtful tonight. They don't need to win this game tonight. They can get a little bit healthier, take this extended by, and go into next week with that chance to win. So if he's not going to be playing, what are we expecting from the Titans offense? It's probably not a lot of points tonight. So we'll go through that like matchup by matchup and say, okay, as I said, the Raiders, they're, they bench Carr. Uh, the 49ers still have something to play for. The Giants still need to win. They're going up against the Colts, and that's uh, not a spot that the Colts need to be winning. So I'll go through each matchup and say, what do we know as of now? Have the lines moved in any which way? Are they moving opposite of what I thought they would move based on this potential motivation? And then make my uh, make my bets off of that or simply stay away because I'm like, if, if there's a big difference for eight points to four and a half for what it is for the Jags like you, I don't know how I would read that. At, at a yeah. certain point, I have to say, I'm not comfortable with that. So it's just a stay away. Yeah. Reading is the key thing. I think that's the most important thing here. And with the Jags, I was uneasy on Tuesday when I saw the four point gap, but well, the three and a half point gap now, because it did move to four and a half. Uh, I was a bit uneasy when I saw that because I was like, okay, I know they can, if they're in week, if they win week 18, they're in. The reason why I actually have more confidence in them now is not just because it moved to four and a half, which means some people who may have information are, you know, taking the uh, lay in the four there. Uh, but it also says to me that uh, I rather they have, they have a wild card chance still. Like it's like a six point eight percent chance where if they win this week but lose next week, they could still get in via a wild card. So. I think they have more more motivation than um, maybe it's being billed as. So I think there is enough there to still feel okay about the Jags specifically. But like you said, it comes down to reading first. That is kind of the key thing that you want to do um, and decide, you know, is there enough motivation here to do it? Uh, looking over at 538, if the Jags win this week and then lose next week, they still have a 9% playoff chance. Okay. So I think for them... That's why I've felt more confident. But again, a there aren't a lot of times you get a three and a half point gap between your number and the market. So that that was unnerving is the word that I would use for that for sure. I would also say this is the time of year where, especially next week, you'll start to see uh, if anyone's you know following sources on Twitter, like you'll start to see like oh players have contracted and yeah, yeah. how many how many yards they need. So it's like that stuff's like not easy to find mm-hmm. finding like contract incentives yeah. and. Uh, oh, this player needs like and, and only like 73 more yards. And then he hits his contract incentive for an extra like 250 K or whatever it is. Like mm-hmm. that is also important. And, you know, we've seen Brady like help out some of the receivers, Gronk, uh, you know, over the past few seasons, yep. like get him to those marks and finding that info was very tough. Um, but that is also another step that I would take. So it's, it's reading. It's like, can I find any of it? Number one, are they actually in a good spot to get that done? Right. And then it's like we're playing the dynamic of like, okay, this team has nothing to play for. They're locked into their their seed, and they're only going to play their receivers like half the game in week eighteen. Right. But they this player also needs to get like ninety yards. It's like, well, right. <laughs> motivation is a player level thing, not just a team level thing. Right. Um, and I think that's important. And I think Schefter usually has Adam Schefter usually has like a post on ESPN that will outline incentives. Uh, you want to read that as soon as it goes up because markets will move based on that. So uh, it's one of those where you want to be ahead of that for sure. Let's dig into some games where both teams have a lot of motivation beginning in Foxborough for the Dolphins and the Patriots. The Patriots are three point favorites here. Total is 41 and a half. And the buzzkill here is that Teddy Bridgewater is going to start uh, with Tua Tunga Vailoa, unfortunately, back in co- concussion protocol. But the Dolphins still need to win this game. You know, they kind of have to go on. So, Tom, to you, can Teddy do enough to help the Dolphins push for a win in this game or at least a cover at minus three or plus three? Uh, th- this is probably one of the, the toughest games on the slate. I, I think 
looking at this from a team perspective, I think we're going to see a lot of running the ball. Uh, you know, Teddy did look okay in that one start. It was against the the Vikings, right? We had 300 yards and two touchdowns, for, like 329 yards. If I, I think correctly. he came off the bench, so it wasn't right. technically a start. But Skylar Thompson got hurt, I believe. Uh, right. It's weird because Teddy's actual start, he played one snap, but he played a lot of snaps in the one game he didn't start. It's a very confusing team. Right, so he was there for the game against the Bengals and then Minnesota. Yeah. But he, he looked okay in that game. Yeah. Obviously, the Vikings secondary is, is terrible. Uh, and it's not the same as New England. I think that we're going to see a lot of running the ball in this game. I also think that the deep shots probably won't be there for Tyreek. So I think that Miami is going to try and like manufacture touches for him, like jet sweeps, little like quick pitches or like bubble screens or whatever it is just to get Tyreek the ball. So I think it's going to be a lot of running the ball on both sides. It's not like Mac Jones inspires a lot of confidence either. Um, so I think if Miami can get, the touches in the right areas of the field to Tyreek to just get him the ball and then let him run, they'll have a shot. But if the Patriots can hold him down, I don't see that this turning into a shootout. I don't either, which is why I took the under at 42 and a half. Uh, it's 41 and a half now, but uh, my numbers and I, this total model is new, which means it could suck, but um, we're in the process of back testing now. So maybe it, we'll see if it sucks, but I've got it at 36.4 which seems really low. And it's, it's again, you're always a little concerned when you're a lot off in the market, but I feel like if you're betting this game, just take the under. Um, What's your take on live betting? Because uh, I've, I've I'm been, in Minnesota right now, so I can't. Okay. So that's, that's my take. But <laughs> Because I've been live betting some of the, the Pats games, specifically unders pretty heavily this year uh, when they played uh, – the Jets and when they played the Lions, yeah, they, they beat the Lions. They held the Lions at three points or whatever it was. Yeah, where it was like forty-one and then it was like thirty-eight and then it was like thirty-five. And I'm like these numbers are still too high, right? So I doubt your your brand new total model has anything Jesus. built in for live. But absolutely not. <laughs> this is one of the games that I'm gonna absolutely have my eye on okay. when it comes to live betting because if the quarterbacks can't get it done, New England's defense is still pretty good. Uh, mm. And if the Dolphins are able to move the ball, like this is a game that screams like 17 to seven or like 21 right. to three. Right. My concern is the Patriots have scored like eight defensive touchdowns this year. And I'm like, oh. that's a really good way to screw it under. So uh, we'll see on that. But I feel like if you want action in this game, I think the best route for doing so is via the under based on at least what my numbers are saying. The game I have no read on uh, is Carolina Tampa Bay. So I'm going to lean on you here, Tom. Uh, Tampa Bay is a three point favorite here. Total is 40 and a half. And the Panthers, you know, look a little feisty with Sam Darnold at quarterback. He's been OK. Uh, they've been able to run the football. But hey, this Bucks defense, pretty good at stopping the run, too. So how do you see this game playing out? Uh, unfortunately, I see another under. You'd like to think that we'd <laughs> get a like the I think the days of the NFC South shootouts are over. Yeah, like we, we used to have those for a while. Uh, this feels like another under. Uh, this feels like we're going to be seeing another another good bit of running, specifically from uh, the Panther side of things. Tampa is horrible at running the ball this year. We just see Brady with so, so many passing attempts on a nightly basis or I should say on a weekly basis. Um, this game is is one of the probably the games I have the least interest in besides Arizona, Atlanta. I think this is probably one of the worst games because every other game I think is at least interesting. Saints, Eagles is interesting. Browns, Commanders is at least interesting from the commander side of things. But this game, it's under, it's Bucks. Um, it's over Brady on passing attempts as I've gone to consistently this year. And then uh, like Mike Evans redemption versus Carolina instead of dropping those two long touchdown passes he had in whatever week it was. Yeah. That would be... <laughs> That would be the spot of like Mike Evans anytime touchdown. Yeah, it's so hard to trust him right now because like uh, this is like a, a watch the tape bro kind of take, but like just seems I don't know like if something's up or what, but he doesn't seem like Mike Evans. He seems a little bit like the whole team seems kind of lackadaisical, honestly. It, it, I mean, and, like, that's the best way to put it. He doesn't seem I have, like sharp off his cuts. Yeah. And I seem like I have the utmost respect for Mike Evans. Like he's awesome. So it's not like a, I'm just wondering if something's up with the team because like they all seem checked out despite the fact they're fighting for a playoff spot in this game. And I think the reason why I'm pretty comfortable in staying away from this one is my numbers do disagree here. Uh, one of them shows a bit of value in Carolina. Other one shows uh, Tampa Bay by 5.6. That one's a little bit more aggressive on Tampa Bay because 
it tries to assume that if you have like really bad late down efficiency, it will regress more towards the mean because that can be super, super spiky and they've been awful on late downs this year. And like, will they get better? I don't know. I, I can't <laughs> at this point with the way they've looked, I can't tell you. I think the reason, another reason why I wouldn't want to capitalize on that, that model showing value, value in the bucks is, you know, maybe the Panthers are just better with Sam Darnold. I have a big adjustment upward for them in there because their late down success rate was like 32 percent uh it is, it is like 32 percent for the full season but when darnold has played has been much better so i don't know man i think it's it just leads to be like if you have if you don't have a firm read on it just uh feel free to stay away and i would say enjoy the game but i'm not sure we're doing that here i would like a, a few extra yards for mike evans uh back in the summer i wrote about over uh his over on season long receiving yards yeah um, which is, is like super close. I'd have to, I'd have to double check after last week, after the holiday of, uh, the Monday, uh, the Sunday night game, I should say, yeah, of where that lies. But, um, yeah, this game doesn't really move the needle for me. <laughs> you know what the number was for Evans? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was 10,050 and a half uh, to 10,000, 1,050 and a half. Okay. Uh, he would need about like, 70 per game because he's at 915 right now. Okay. I think that this could be a spot where Brady definitely gets him above a thousand because he's at a thousand every year. Right. Um, right. And so, and right. You know, going into 10 over the summers, it was, you know, 1050. And there was the in the uncertainty around Godwin starting the season yeah. healthy. Right. And it's like, okay, they signed Russell or they, you know, they get Russell Gage and then they right. signed Julio. Right. And I wasn't convinced. Yeah. Seems gross. They're the, the you mentioned the the Brady pass attempts, which is great for like prop betting is over on pass attempts. It does not lead to DFS goodness for them. No, because absolutely not. Kate Otten's at like 0. 0.6 yards per route run since their bye week. <laughs> Evans 1.1. I think Godwin's at like Lenny leads them in yards per route run since their bye 1.8. And if a running back leads in yards per route run, not a great team. So I'm going to leave that that game aside. And let's talk about a more fun game on Monday night. We got the Bills at the Bengals. Bills are one and a half point favorites here. The total is 49 and a half. And the Bengals have been scorching it on offense recently. Um, they've been dealing with injuries, whether it be the Jamar Chase injury or T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd getting hurt in game. Can they do the dang thing here and keep their hopes? It's slim hopes, but hopes alive getting that uh, first round by. Yeah, I think that this is a game that is going to highlight what the like the best of the NFL. Mm -hmm. And like to me, this game, like looking at this slate overall and then seeing this game at the end, it reminds me of Shawshank Redemption, where <laughs> Andy Dufresne like crawls through the sewage and then is and then at the end is like freed and there's that gif of him <laughs> stare like staring up. It's like we have to go through all of these bad games to get to like an absolute marquee game yep. on Monday night. And I think it's probably gonna be one of the best games of the year. Uh two elite quarterbacks playing an elite level, two amazing offenses, great offensive option on both sides with it with super, super high motivation. Like it's basically the perfect storm for what we want to again highlight like what the best of the NFL is. I personally have a ton of interest in this game. I'd be on the, the Bengals in this game and the over. Not many primetime games. I'd take the over. I don't think I'm taking an over on any primetime game this season. Uh, but the offensive potential is super high. The dynamic receivers on both sides present, I would say, endless amount of opportunities when it comes to prop betting. Yeah, absolutely. So you like the Bengals, you said. Do you want the one and a half or do you want the money line? Money line at FanDuel is minus 102. You could get that at plus money as recently as last night at some spots. Um, but uh, would you want the security of the points? Or you're just taking the money line there. I, I would just take the money line there. Go yeah. for it with, with, with Joey B. Um, you know, they're, <laughs> the points are interesting, especially considering their field goal kicking as of late and some of their yeah. extra point kicking as of late, specifically last week, as we saw, wasn't, uh, wasn't as sharp as I'd like it to be. Um you know, their defense is certainly exploitable in certain spots. And Josh Allen is a quarterback that can get that done against any single defense. Um, so I, I just take the shot on, on the money line. Just just yeah. roll with what with what I believe is that they can be the best team in the AFC. Uh, you can still get plus 105 at BetMGM. It's moved to at least even money or, or worse in a lot of spots. But it's still plus 105 there, um, which is pretty good, I think. I talked on Tuesday about how I like the Bengals money line as well. I think that that's honestly like... 
if you look at them from week five on, which is when they changed their scheme, and this is not cherry picking because week five they stunk. So this is not cherry picking. Uh, if you look from week five on, they've been the, like the best offense in football? Question mark? Like they've been insane. And that includes the entire time Jamar Chase is out. So they've got Chase healthy. They've got Higgins healthy. They've got um, Trent Irwin is actually playing really well and needing <laughs> Tyler Boyd's playing time, which is kind of odd to see. Like, and they're running the football effectively, which they were not doing before either. So I think the Bengals are legit good. And I was looking at the Super Bowl market, and it's tough to like get super jazzed about the Bengals at eight to one because their odds of getting the first round by are low. If they they'd have to beat the Bills this weekend and have the Chiefs lose one of their final two games. I don't recall what their week 18 matchup is, but they get the the Broncos this week. So they need the Chiefs to lose either the Broncos matchup or against Jared Siddham next week. So their odds of getting the first round by are not high, but like as we saw last year, they can tear through it without a for without even, you know, uh, without a first round by and still play well. The Chiefs get the Raiders. Yeah, Jared Stidham, what could go wrong? Uh, you know, just back up the Brinks truck on the Raiders in that one. Um so I haven't bid on the Bengals at 8-1 yet, um, but I think it's at least interesting because I think they're good enough to justify interest in that market when they are they have the fifth longest odds behind the 49ers, uh, the Eagles, the Chiefs, and the Bills. I think they're well within that discussion. The question is, is would it come down to how, how this week shakes out for next week's playing time like would so, home sit next week is the question no because they can't lock up the first round by okay. um so they will need to play next week because they don't own the tiebreaker over either the bills or the bengals because both those teams beat them in the regular season so let's say the chiefs win this week they would be uh 13 and 3 bills would also uh bills and bengals would both be 12 and 4 so they both be a game behind but if either of them won, they'd have the tiebreaker over the Chiefs. Gotcha. So maybe if they got up big in the second half, they'd be able to rest Mahomes. They could ensure they'd win. But I feel like next week, all three of these teams will be going hard. One situation where they wouldn't is if the Bengals lose this week, they could rest guys the next week. But I guess actually they have Baltimore next week, and Baltimore could still win the division. So um, I think we're getting full gas uh, so for all these teams. Is, it's like I said at the beginning, like just reading and understanding. Yeah all of the like permutations yeah it's like i always like see it in my mind as like one of those like charts that like diverge it's like okay if they win this is what happens then right. week 18 they play this team that all they also need to win this our brains are just flow charts at this point right, that's right. all they are just like yeah. understanding these because it does impact betting markets not for only a week-to-week -week basis but if you have a, a bet for the, the future for the conference yeah. I have a bet on the Bengals to win the division, which I, I, I spoke yep. about. Uh, I don't know. I said a while ago. It was plus three fifty. It was before their first match with the Ravens in Week Five, and they got just they they lost that game. So I right. felt very stupid, but um, it was plus three fifty. I think at that time, and feels pretty good now. After after Lamar got ruled out, yeah, I, I said to our group, I said, "Why is why are the Bengals still plus money to yeah. win?" the division when Lamar has been ruled out with a PCL injury, whatever it is. Right. He is, uh, they're minus 250 now. So it looks like Lamar is probably not going to play this week either. So that game might wind up being meaningless next week if the Bengals win and the Ravens lose. And I, I don't know. I want to see healthy Lamar for the playoffs. So I wouldn't mind if that happened, but right. I also selfishly want that game to matter uh, for next week. I'd like to lock up that future and not worry about that, but you know, um, it'll be interesting either way. All right, let's open up the board for you, Tom. Uh, across the rest of Week 17, where else are you seeing value this week? Uh, let's start with tonight, uh, and that would be Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz over 38 and a half receiving yards. Uh, I'm not expecting a whole lot from tonight's game. I don't think <laughs> many, I don't think many people are, but uh, Titans dead last in the lead for the most receiving yards allowed to tight ends. Uh, their secondary overall is very bad. It's a spot that we've been continuously attacking. Um, don't see this as a very exciting game. Don't see this as a very high scoring game. Uh, but Schultz over receiving yards. He's and surprisingly, uh, if my numbers are correct, you could double check this real quick, or we'll double check it at some point. Schultz actually has the highest red zone target share on the on the Cowboys. Oh, it's like since Dak came back, he's, he's at like thirty six percent. Right, and I think overall um, in the season yeah. it's twenty four 
somewhere around there, higher than Lamb, uh, which is certainly very interesting. So he's sitting at plus 230 yeah. for a touchdown tonight. So horrible against tight ends. It's only 38 and a half receiving yards. His touchdown odds are up at 230. I like Schultz tonight. So that was that would be the first spot that I'm looking. Again, Brady over passing attempts uh, is certainly interesting. Uh, when it comes to the Lions and the Bears, I think that this is a game that, again, we could see some points, as we saw in the first time, uh, the first time that they played a uh, uh, inside the dome, which is obviously great to see. There's no props posted for this game, but certainly would be looking to something along the lines of Jared Goff, passing attempts, uh, passing yards, St. Brown, somewhere along there. I think this is a game that we could see some more fireworks. DJ uh, Shark alt over receiving yards of 140 plus. Yeah. Um, and then the Giants and the Colts game, 38 and a half over under. <laughs> Again, doesn't move the needle for me. Nick Foles going to be back out there for the Colts. Not something I have interest in watching literally any second of, except if it's on red zone. <laughs> but the Giants have high motivation. As as anyone, as any team in the league, they have a, a lot of motivation to win uh, because the Commanders are playing the Browns, which I, I think is a winnable matchup. And that game, I just don't have a read on because we're going to be seeing Wentz back out there. Yeah. But from the Giants' perspective, can they like can they get this done against a team they should be able to beat? Like they should not lose to the Colts. So what does that mean? Okay. That means that they're going to be giving the ball to Barkley. Maybe we're going to see some Richie James out there. We're probably not going to be seeing Daniel Jones throwing the ball 30 some odd times. Cause that's not a spot that he, he has been doing it as of late a little bit, Yeah, but it's not a spot that they've gone to a whole lot this season. So whatever Saquon props combined rushing and receiving, that's the spot that I'll look uh, initially uh, without any update, some updates going to come out today or tomorrow about these players resting or not resting. Yeah, yeah. And that'll change things. But those are spots I'm initially looking this week. Well, they can clinch this week if they win. Um, and I think they, like Jones, there was a locker room clip of him talking about how much they wanted to clinch at home. Okay. So I think they have super high motivation oh. to get it done this week because they want to get it done. I think they clinch if they win this week. And they'd be right. locked into the sixth seed, I think, potentially, if that were to happen because they hold the tiebreaker over Washington. I don't think they have it over Detroit, but like they've got they've got some good tiebreaker scenarios in their favor. So I think they could lock it up with a win this week. And they play the Eagles next week, which you, I mean, I think the Eagles' motivation is higher than people give it credit for. Right. Because if they lose out, the Cowboys could win out, and they'd be in a bad spot. So I think like there was I was talking about Miles Sanders on Twitter last week, and someone was like, "Yeah, they have no motivation to play." I'm like. Buddy, 99% is not 100%. And that would that was their odds of winning the division, getting the first round by. It's not a 95% now, which is still high, but it's not perfect. So I think there is actually a lot of motivation there and uh for the Eagles, despite you know the fact they're sitting hurts because they should, but I think there is still a lot of juice for them. Yeah, so the so the Giants definitely a spot that I'm looking. Um outside of that. Until props get posted and we and we really see some numbers, I mean, I would certainly look to Mike White. Yeah, be back. Uh, Forty-two and a half for Jet Seahawks. I feel like that game could be a bit of a shootout. We've seen the Seahawks get into some crazy games, and then I don't know Stidham to throw to throw an interception. <laughs> Stidham under. <laughs> <laughs> Those are those are probably the spots that I'll be looking this week. Yeah. Um, one game we did not discuss because uh, I talked about it a lot on Tuesday was the Packers Vikings. It and weirdly that those actually that game has moved against me. I had the under at 46 and a half. It's now 48 and a half. So clearly I've got a bad read on that. Uh, I also did like the Vikings plus three. So if you were tuning in looking for a read on that game, talked about that more Tuesday. So you can go back to that there. But the numbers I liked were the Vikings plus three. I still think 48 and a half is way too high, despite the fact it's moved against me. Um, but I think if you're looking for some thoughts in those games, those be the ones that I have. I do like the Vikings plus the points. Uh, the money line is shortened to plus 156. It was plus 162. So not as much value there anymore, but still enough uh, to be enticing. And then the under at uh, 48 and a half, both ones I would be turning to there. That's all we got for week 17 here on covering the spread. As mentioned, 
a lot of weird stuff to sort through for this week. It is not a a, uh, a slate lacking complexity. But Tom, I appreciate your time for swinging by, breaking down your thoughts on that, and good luck to you in Week 17. We'll talk to you once again soon. Thanks for having me. Check out Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. Want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, good luck to you throughout this week. Uh, check out our semifinal podcast with that Fang. Check out the week 17 first look and power rankings update. Also in the same feed by searching for covering the spread. Have a happy new year. We'll talk to you once again next week on Tuesday for a four show week. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.